All right, let's see if there's one other one on race. Um, Jews make up 0.2% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's Nobel Prize winners. Blacks make up 13% of the population, yet 95% of the NBA. How do you know that's all cultural and no genetic base up? No one knows that. No, we, we know that. Of course, it's, it's a combination of both. It's a combination of both. Right? Uh, certainly, when it comes to NBA stars, you have to have a certain physique. You know, I, I don't have that physique. I don't have the height. And, and very few very few people from certain countries or certain heritages have the height. Okay, so if you're going to look for a long-distance runner, you go to Kenya or Uganda. Not, not blacks, you go to Kenya or Uganda. I think it's Uganda. Where they really, really good long-distance running. Why? Because they have a certain uh, uh, ratio uh, genetically between body mass and muscle and lean f and leanness and uh, you know plus they they run in high altitudes or they 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 live in high altitudes or whatever so there's certain characteristics that you look for you want a basketball player yeah you you you, you know you go to where people have the physique of a basketball player you don't have to identify them by race to do that not i mean there are plenty of blacks who can't play basketball there are plenty of blacks who are too short to play basketball. They're, 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 the whole tribes in Africa that are very short. So, yeah, you use that. Now, why, why do Jews have a uh, world's Nobel Prize? Well, Jews have cultivated that. And some of that is genetic. There's no question. But a lot of that is cultural. And some of it is genetic. But there's the difference. Here's the difference. And, and here's, this is an important point both about the MBA and about Nobel Prizes. There are lots of people with the genes similar to LeBron James. Lots of people with black skin who have very similar physiques to LeBron James. But LeBron James is the best basketball player in the world and they are not. Why? Because he added something to it. And I don't think it's culture. I think it's his choices, his dedication, his commitment, his competitiveness. If you watch the series of Mike, Michael Jordan, that's a special human being. Special human being. Irrespective of the genes that made him athletic, there are lots of people who have that athleticism built into their genetic makeup. Right. So... It's him. LeBron James created himself as a great basketball player. Every single player in the NBA, whatever color skin they have, whatever athletic ability they have, they, they had to have certain genes. That was a starting point. But then, what made them superstars? It was them. Their choices, their work ethic, their dedication, their competitiveness. The same with the Nobel Prizes for Jews. Lots of people in the world are super smart. Lots of people in the world are super smart. But some people, partially maybe because of culture, and partially, significantly because of the choices they make, elevate themselves, use what genes have given them to make themselves superstars. That's true in the NBA. For example, culture plays a role. So you could be born with a great physique in, um, to play basketball in certain countries, but they don't have basketball courts. So you're never going to play basketball. You're never going to practice as a young person, and you're never going to be good at it, even though you have a great physique. You have Michael Jordan's physique. You have plenty of kids who are born with the IQ of an Albert Einstein, who, because of the culture they're born into, will never be Albert Einstein. So culture plays a role. Then on top of culture, you have, on top of culture, you have choices. There are plenty of kids who have the right culture, who have the right genes, and never make the right choices to be a superstar in science, to be a superstar in, in basketball, to be a superstar in anything else. So there are three elements here. And to be a superstar, all of them have to align. Yes, genes contribute. Culture contributes. 
And then you have to make the most of that culture and those genes. And that's what's important. And in Jewish culture, studying matters. Getting good grades matters. Being smart and showing that you're smart through education matters. It's the whole reward system in that culture is built around that. So if you're born with high intelligence, if you're born with the genes, with a high power motor up here, you've got a culture that supports that, encourages that in pursuit, and then you have to engage it. So none of that contradicts the idea that there's no such thing as genes, and it's irrelevant to know if somebody is a Jew or not. What you want to know is, are they smart? And are they committed? And are they, do they have the potential of being a superstar? That's all. Uh, do you think religionist Whitaker Chambers thought of gas chambers when he read out the shrug because it depicts love for living on earth? I think he thought of gas chambers because of his hatred of the individual and his hatred of reason. And yes, because Atla shrugged, depicts the beauty of living as an individual. Are we a product of our metaphysics? I'm not sure what that means. No, we're a product of our choices. Um, our, uh, uh, choices are our metaphysics, so yes. But metaphysics not in the sense of physics, in the sense of metaphysics, in the sense of our nature. Our nature is that we have free will. Our nature is that we have the ability to choose. What are your thoughts on the concept of unconscious bias? Is the concept even valid? I think it probably is. I don't know that it should be called unconscious bias. I think there are certain automated, uh, automated knowledge that we have that we have integrated automatically and that we respond in certain ways. And that, that I think that's true of lots of things in life. And there's no reason it couldn't be true of, of uh, how we relate to people of particular skin color. If you've been taught for when you're very young, uh, black men are dangerous, black men are dangerous, and you internalize that, even if it is an adult, you come to the conclusion that is wrong, you might still have that emotion. You might have, still have that fast thinking or instinct, as they, you know, that, that people call. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute using the super chat and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time so I'll do it again maybe we'll get some more today um, if you like what you're hearing if you appreciate what I'm doing then I appreciate your support uh, those of you who don't yet support the show please take this opportunity go to yourrunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com yourrunbrookshow and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...